Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Breeze, Breezeway Productions' The Breeze, where we bring you the latest in independent films and film festival news. And we have a film uh, team here with us today to talk about their film, which was an official selection of the Overlook Film Festival. We have director Ariel Vita and Jane Badler. How are you guys? Good. Thank you so much for having us. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. So tell me a little about the film that was uh, selected for the festival this year. Jane, uh, you start, uh, Al, you start. So yeah, trim, trim season. Uh, yeah, right before the festival, I was saying I'd just gotten my my phones two year, you know, two years ago. We were we were literally in the forests of Northern California scouting the uh, the cannabis farms that it takes place on. <laughs> And it was uh, Jane and, and the team Shawnee came to me with this beautiful script. And uh, we shot in uh, Brighton, Utah, with a lot of interstitial shots throughout actual Northern California. And uh, the premiere, the, I, I'll talk to it more later because this was yeah. just thrill- hearing nothing but the best about Overlook through so many um, mutual friends. Uh, art directed a film called Babysitter Murders that was there back when it was at the Stanley Hotel. And um, yeah, this is just a dream come true to, to have this mm. film that world premiere there nice very cool so uh the film uh trim season jane we were talking before we started recording that you're one of the producers on the film so uh, tell me a little bit about how you and ariel met uh and then teamed up to make this well you know every film that you see on a screen that gets finished it's like a work of god or a miracle because it's very difficult to get films made and um i feel like in some ways i'm quite emotional that this film was finished and uh we had such an extraordinary team um i think it happened uh shawnee uh shawnee lamott who um i've worked with before on other films uh we did the fall together with um Uh, a really good cast that was about a year earlier, two years, he brought me the script. And, um, and I just said to him, Oh my God, I really want to play this character. And so it went through a few years where nothing really happened. And then we decided we were going to make it happen. And one of the other producers uh, brought Ariel on. And I think once Ariel came on board, we all got very excited and we thought, yeah, we can do this now because it's just what we needed. We needed someone with a very original, very creative voice. She's she's extraordinary at design. At um, you know, we needed a very good designer, I think, to for this film to work. And she had all that production design. Uh, a woman, a young woman with a a new, fresh vision. Um, and so once Ariel came on board, I just said to him, "We got to get this film made." And Ariel was also very instrumental in the script. Um, we were able to take a script that was good and make it, I feel, into a great script. Um, we took that very seriously. The script, for me, Elster as an actress, is everything. And if there's a hole in the script, you will see it on the screen. So we were very, very careful to plug in all those holes. We worked about a year on that before we even started production. Mm-hmm. And then I think on the back of Ariel and, um, you know, the production team that we also, Paper Street, that came on board, we were able to bring in a, a pretty outstanding cast. Nice. Uh, yeah, I was I was taking a look yeah. at the cast. It is uh, very diverse. You have a lot of new, fresh faces that are that are in the film. Uh, so you segue into my next question, Ariel. You do have a history of uh, production design, and then now you're helming it as a director. Tell me what aspects that you have learned in your production design years did you bring with you into directing for this film? Well, I was fortunate, you know, as a designer, besides loving production design, is then you're also kind of inadvertently shadowing some of your favorite directors. If you're designing for uh, Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead, Amy Simons, uh, Hiromori, it's like the people that I was coming up with as a designer, you know, you're honing into, you know, the the tips and tricks of indie filmmaking on the art department side, but just Mm -hmm. seeing the interactions of of these leaders and what I aspired to be then as as a as a designer or as a director myself, but uh, my production designer Katie Simon was my art director whenever I design. So moving into directing and her coming up to production design, you know you're trying to find locations mm-hmm. that already have like such beautiful texture because I would sometimes be put in you know situations where it's a blank white room and perfectly clean and new and they're like, but it was free. Can you just can you just make this creepy <laughs> and yeah. all of the best in, in the endless you know Benson and Morad and we they had the camp Arcadia in mind so 
when we were scouting in Utah and uh, Luca Bazzelli, our cinematographer as well, we were just looking for places with just, you know, beautiful character and just really original um, looks. And then how can we, you know, tip, you know, tip it into our trim season, you know, red drenched, you know, weed drenched uh, lore. And I was, I was hoping to not, yeah, be telling Katie to fa fabricate this from scratch, you know, with, with, with two nickels, because when you have a hundred years of texture in a, in a cabin, it's like, that, you know, that speaks volumes. And then Katie can hone in on the character moments and the, you know, what's the lighter? What's the symbolism of these little props that we're handing to each other and trying to uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully take the the lead from the people that I've been so honored to work with. And I always want it to be so gorgeously saturated, but justified. So I, I get this red weed script and you're like, so we can go, we can really go to town with some of these visuals and it's and it's uh, going to be justified for the, for the heart of the story. But I'm so happy that... I can sense your passion from the way that you describe all of this. So obviously you love what you do and that the whole thing is like a playground for you. So it just really just jumps through the screen at me. And uh, I wanted to wish you a congratulations on the acceptance of the Overlook Film Festival. Uh, for people that want to learn more about the film, where can they go to find it and check out Trim Season? Uh, well, we've got a couple more festivals coming up. And... Um... I guess really on, on Instagram, but where else do you think, Ariel? Where else can we find out about it? There's going to be a lot of press coming out. Yeah, so out of out of Overlook, which, yeah, uh, Michael, uh, Doug, Landon, like we were so, we had, had just the best time there. That was our, our world premiere. And now uh, Panic Fest in Kansas City um, on the 13th. We're playing opening night um, at Panic Fest. And I know, um, I know there's a lot of other, you know, percolating elements or, or places we have our fingers crossed but uh paper street pictures i think would be the you know on social media uh, yeah, but social also, media okay july and august will be big big months for screening so hopefully yeah. around the world we'll be able to check it out yeah. Awesome. Well, we will plug all of those social medias below so that people that watch this can then uh, find it and check out uh, the the company and the film. And I want to thank you both for joining me today, director Ariel Vita and actress and producer Jane Badler. Thank you for coming on the show to talk about trim season. Thank you so much.